Hey, David Raffoff here. Hope you're having a good day. I thought it'd be fun to take a look at something new that's in uh, Phoenix Live View that I haven't really seen too much about. Um, I, I've just been building out kind of a toy app to help me um, learn both Elixir and Phoenix. And um, one of the things that I've um, run into recently is I have a, a live view that's getting really big. Um, and it has a bunch of pieces that are pretty distinct. So I was kind of looking at what's the best way to break those out. Um, and I noticed that um, there's something called um, components in uh, Live View now. So I thought it might be interesting to take a look at those. And just kind of on the surface, they really reminded me, um, they look very similar to how you would write um, React components. Um, and they even use that um, kind of flux pattern you would use if you're using Redux, um, where you can send, you know, um, have an action, have some updated data, send out uh, an event, you know, up the hierarchy, and then have a, a reducer or something that's paying attention to that that'll take that event, take the data, update the overall state of the app, and then push all that data downstream so that any components or like, you know, uh, descendant components even of the view can just pick up any of the changes in the state that they care about and re-render. Um, I'm not totally sure if that's like the perfect analogy. Like I said, this is still a pretty new, um, from, from what I can tell, it's a fairly new feature and there's not a whole lot of uh, examples out there. Um, there is some documentation on it, it's pretty decent, but um, I just uh, want to emphasize, I don't know that this is like the right, you know, the exact right way to use this, but it did work out pretty well for me just kind of using that analogy. So anyway, I thought I would just run through um, what this looks like in the code and show you what I'm talking about here. So I guess just quickly too, before we look at the code, maybe I can show you um, if you're interested in checking out documentation on this, um, this is where you would want to go. You can just search for uh, phoenix.live component and it'll have all the documentation in here. And it's worth reading. There's um, a couple different ways you can use them. So I would recommend, um, it was basically like stateless and stateful components, uh, also kind of similar to um, React. But um, this is ultimately like what I was trying to split up. I had one big view here that you know was comprised of a list of assets, which you can see in the top left here. Um, well, let me move this up a little bit. So a list of assets, and for each of those assets, there's a form and then a list of payments, um, which is really more like income. But there's a list of those and a form for each one. It's so like YouTube is one, merch is another. <clears throat> and then a list of budget items, and there's a form for each one of those. And then obviously on the right here, there's a chart, and as you make changes, the, the chart gets updated with those changes. So um, basically I had one big view that was just doing way too much stuff, and so I was just kind of looking at an easy way, um, or the, a good way to break that down to kind of make each of the components a little more responsible for um, one uh, give each component a single responsibility. Uh, coincidentally, <laughs> there's somebody uh, in the community who's written a really great article on this, and I've always been a few steps behind her as I'm going through and learning Elixir and Phoenix, so I'll, I'll put a link to a really good article on um, single responsibility principle and um, uh, ways you can achieve that with these live components. But um, yeah, that's basically what I was going for here. And here is, let's pull this code up here. So you can read that easily. But um, let's start all the way out at the router. So um, this is the uh, live view here. So it's report live. And that's just loading on my index uh, at the moment or at the, the root. And if we hop over here, you can see that you know we're using Live View, and then you'll notice here um, I'm just aliasing all the different um, uh, child components that I want to use. So I have a <clears throat> assets list component, a budgets budget items list component, a payments list component, and a chart component. And then here, um, where I previously had just a really long blob of HTML and all kinds of stuff going on in there. I've been able to really reduce it down to just, you know, including those components. And um, there's a couple different ways to um, include these components, but uh, here you can see 
I'm just saying I have a live component. Um, I want to use this socket. This is the component that I want to use. And then this is saying, um, these are the like assigns that I'm interested in. If you're like props, I guess, if you're, um, so it's like analogous to props, maybe if you're coming from the React side. But these are essentially the things I want to watch. And when they change, I want to make sure that this component gets re-rendered. So each of these just cares about what um, it's concerned with. So, you know, assets only cares about assets. Payments only care about payments. Uh, budget items only care about budget items. But where it gets interesting is the chart component needs to take all these things into account and then figure out how to re-render as they change. So for this one, you can see I've got um, each of those things getting passed in. So I'm, I care about assets, payments, and budget items. And then um, I'm not going to look at uh, all of these, but I'll kind of show you the pattern here. So uh, maybe the easiest place to jump to is the asset list. So this is what's responsible for um, rendering that list of forms for each as uh, for each asset. So within here, uh, you'll notice immediately like this is really simple. The only thing I have to care about is um, that this is a live component um, that I I'm going to be rendering a whole bunch of uh, asset components, so I need to um, make it easy to reference that here. And then uh, this is my business model for asset. Um, it's so um, it's kind of cool because like the only things that I'm really referencing here are things that are directly about individual assets. And then <laughs> you can see here there's a, a render function uh, with ARD1 that just takes assigns. Um, and it does some magic, I think, to um, make um, these uh, variables available. But here you can see you can just do at assets um, to access um, the information that you're interested in from the assigns. And essentially all I'm doing is just um, looping over all of those assets with an index. Um, and I need that index so I know like what position it's in in the list of assets. And then for each of those, I'm just rendering out another live component and it's going to follow a similar pattern but not exactly the same so I'll take a socket the component I'm interested in the data I want to pass in here and then at the end um, I have to pass in an ID that's unique and uh, I'll show you why that is in a second um, but it's um, uh, yeah well we'll get into it and that's really the only thing in here so this is like a super basic component all it really does is just you know list out um, a set of components and then here we've got the individual asset component so that's going to be in charge of one little form for uh, like this here for say for car and again it's just interested in kind of the business model here for uh, an asset it is a live component I should probably move that up keep it consistent and then it does a render and in its render it's um, it's just dumping out the information about uh, the asset so name amount and rate and then also just track an index value as well and then when it changes it has this update asset uh, event that needs to get handled and so in order to be able to do handle event in here you need to pass that ID in, like I showed you from this list, so it needs to have some kind of unique identifier. Uh, there's other things that you can do too when you when you pass that in. I would suggest um, reading the documentation on that because I um, don't fully understand that yet, so I don't want to give you any bad info on it. But you can see here, um, we're just handling this update asset event, and we're going to get an asset and a socket. An asset's just the asset that is getting referred to here that we picked up from the assigns and um, what I'm doing here is I'm just generating a new asset an updated asset um, using these values and then holding on to the index if we had an actual ID on this we could use probably use ID index which is the closest thing that I had at the moment and then um, uh, you can see here I'm doing send self and I'm sending um, update asset this new asset that was created and the index. So I'm essentially trying to send out an action or an event, um, but it's just this this uh, atom here called update asset. And then the two things that um, we're gonna need to actually do the update. And so to me, this looked really similar to like actions with um, React and Redux, where you 
you have a thing you're trying to do and you just send along the info that's relevant. And then at the end of this, um, we don't actually need this uh, component to do, do anything else, so we just return uh, no reply and socket without any updates on the socket because this isn't actually going to be responsible for making the change. Um, and this is getting back to that flux pattern where you, um, you know, send out the thing you want to do and the relevant info for it, and you change the state at the top of the um, hierarchy. And then once that changes, um, the new values just propagate down to all the descendant um, components. At least that's how I'm thinking about it. So when we do uh, send self uh, with this, that can uh, I think that can be handled anywhere in this chain. I think it's because all the stuff's in the same process, but I'm not 100% about that. But um, I can show you that I am handling it out here. So um, I have a handle info function here, and it's matching on update asset, and then um, the asset and the index, and then it also there's just a <coughs> three, tu uh, three tuple for that, um, but you can add in whatever you want in there. They just have to match up, and then it also takes the socket, and then all I'm really doing with that is I'm saying, hey, assets are going to be whatever they were, but just go ahead and replace um, at uh, replace the asset with the new asset at this index. And so now I've got my updated um, state here, or my I should say my new copy of the state uh, that's updated. And then um, here I'm just going to do a no reply, and I'm going to assign on the socket um, my new assets to assets. And by doing that, <laughs> anything um, that's interested in um, whatever the you know, getting updated whenever assets changes is going to get updated. So in this example, as I'm making changes to um, the asset component here, um, it's going to go ahead and um, make those changes. And because the chart here is interested in um, any changes or updates to assets, uh, it's going to re-render. So when we go back to, um, I guess I can just show you the code for that real quick. There's not much there. So th this is actually probably not the right way to do this, but it works. So it's kind of a starting point um, and it'll make it clear what's happening. So in the chart component, um, again, I'm only interested in the um, chart kind of business model. And then we have this uh, render function with an assigns. And here, anytime we re-render, I'm just taking um, the current assets, payments, and budget items and just regenerating that chart data from it. And then um, that data is getting um, stuck on this chart here. And there's some other stuff going on that actually causes the JavaScript to uh, update that chart. But this is, it's, I'm just trying to illustrate that, um, you know, basically this render will just get run anytime any of these values changes. So, and we don't have to do anything special to, to make that happen. So um, just to demonstrate that one more time, like when we hop over here, as I'm making changes here, you can see that the um, chart itself is updating. And as I add zeros on this, you can see, especially on the left, that the starting value just keeps hopping up. And if I throw them in, throw in all kinds of zeros, we're going to get huge numbers up there. Um, but yeah, I just thought that was really, um, <coughs> really interesting and uh, cool to see that the pattern is very, um, similar to what I'd seen using like React and Redux or uh, Angular and Redux um, and, and kind of following that flux pattern. Um, again, I'm not totally, I'm not like even 70% sure that that's the, the intention behind it. Cause like I said, there's not a whole lot out there at the moment, but um, I thought I would just go ahead and share kind of, um, you know, what I'd been able to do with it um, if you've been messing around with this too, I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts and comments on, um, you know, how you've used it or good examples you've seen of it. Uh, like I mentioned, I'll link that article as well as the, uh, documentation for this. So you, um, hopefully by reading that other article, you can get another point of view on what's the right way to do this. Um, and it actually covered a pretty different use case too. It covered search and doing some routing changes. So it's, it's an interesting one to read about. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. And uh, uh, yeah, if you uh, want to see more videos like this, just hit uh, subscribe and hit the little notification bell. 
um, you know, leave a comment. Like I said, if you've got any uh, suggestions or questions and um, hit that like button, it really helps out the channel. And yeah, thanks for watching and have a good day.